Tonight, I'm gonna to take pictures of the same deep space object using two very different telescopes. One is so small that it can fit in your hand. The other one, well, it's a bit heavy for one person. At the end of the video, we'll compare the pictures we take through each telescope and you can decide whether the big one is worth all the extra effort and cost. So we'll both take a picture of the same deep space object. I'll use the big telescope and you use the little one. How's that? One? Yeah. It's so much smaller than that one. Yeah, it's okay. You love using that scope. And the eagle will still look great. I don't know. The Eagle Nebula is visible right now in the constellation Serpens. It's big, it's bright, and it's 7,000 light years away from Earth. I highly recommend you check out this nebula with your telescope, no matter how big it is. Just wait until you see the difference between the two images of this target. I don't have two identical camera systems to make this a true apples to apples test, but I promise the point of this comparison will be clear when you see the final images. Both telescopes are high quality refractor designs. There's just a hundred millimeter difference in size. That may not seem like a whole lot, but it is. So how much of a difference does that extra aperture make in terms of astrophotography? You'd be surprised. For me to pull this experiment off, we'll need to run two full-featured astrophotography rigs at the same time. Even though we're just comparing telescopes, you can't take a great image without the rest of the kit. Both setups will use astronomy cameras designed for deep space photography, but they're slightly different models. How come yours has a fancy filter wheel? Mine doesn't have that. These are both practical configurations for the equipment that we're using. Don't worry, that camera is a great fit for that little scope. We'll use two ASI Air mini PCs to control the telescopes and take the pictures. They're connected to the camera, the guide camera, and the tracking mount. I can use my tablet to see what the camera and telescope are pointed at, and this is where I can check on things like if I'm in focus or not, and if the images look good. When everything is running smoothly, I can just monitor my progress in the house. Both cameras will take four minute long pictures through the telescopes. That's four solid minutes of collecting light on that camera set. The one on the smaller telescope shoots in full color, meaning Ash will have a complete full color image at the end of the night. There's a light pollution filter in there too to capture a punchier image. The big telescope will shoot with a monochrome camera and narrow band filters. I'll have to build my full color image in the morning using the pictures taken through each filter. Even though there are substantial differences in the types of cameras used, the key differences between using a six inch refractor telescope and a two inch refractor telescope will be clear. For each setup, I try to use relatable configurations for the people that use them. Even though we're both collecting the same amount of time on the Eagle Nebula through both telescopes, the big one will have collected more light overall thanks to a larger objective lens. Just think about how much more light you can collect in a single session using a six inch refractor versus a little two inch one. APO refractor telescopes are known for their crisp contrasty images and you pay for it. This type of telescope is the most expensive option in terms of price per inch of aperture. If you're just interested in more magnification, there are cheaper alternatives to consider, something like an SCT or a Newtonian. If you're mostly interested in capturing planets or the moon, a six inch refractor probably isn't at the top of your list. As a matter of fact, you could buy a 14 inch go-to daub for half the price of this one. Pretty soon it will be time to get the telescopes polar aligned and tracking and pointed towards the Eagle Nebula. The little telescope is shooting at a focal length of 250 millimeters, whereas the big one is shooting just over a thousand. Through the wide field scope, you'll actually see other deep sky objects nearby in the field, whereas the big one will look deep inside of the Eagle Nebula, revealing intricate details. When you combine light gathering power, aperture, with high magnification, focal length, you can see some really crazy stuff in space. I mean, there has to be some benefit to all of this extra cost and effort, right? How would you feel if every time you did astrophotography, you used a kit of this size? Well, I wouldn't be able to set up on my own probably because I don't think I could lift this and it would take a lot more time to set up, that's for sure. Don't get me wrong, I love this telescope. It's my, my favorite telescope, but setting it up and tearing it down is a lot of extra work. So if it's a night with only a few clear hours, there's no way I'm lugging all of this out here. A system like this one, nice and portable to set up, can easily be set up and packed away quickly. So it'll probably get more use. Because the telescope is so light, the tracking mount required to run it is a lot more affordable. You could even run this telescope on a star tracker if you wanted to. The big telescope weighs over 30 pounds, 10 times the weight of the small one, and it requires a 
serious astrophotography mount to operate. So for anyone thinking about upgrading their telescope for astrophotography to something bigger, just remember that your entire setup might have to upgrade along with it. So are you feeling pretty confident that you can take a better picture than me with your telescope? <laughs> nope. <laughs> You've been bragging about it all day online. What? Should we have some sort of vote at the end? I mean, I guess, but I don't know if that's gonna work in my favor. Okay, how about this? Leave a score for each image in the comments. Like Trevor 10, Ash 5, something like that. <laughs> hey, let them decide. Okay, both of the pictures are done and they look great. We snuck in another night of imaging, so both picture has about six hours of total exposure time. Before the big vote, I wanted to clarify a few things. One, these are just rough prices for the telescopes. They don't include the camera, the mount, and all that other fun stuff you need to run a night of astrophotography. Two, I bet you could take a picture just as good as the one I got on the big scope using your equipment. I'm not saying you need to spend 10 grand for a great astro photo. I just thought it was a cool concept for a video. You could argue that this was a better comparison of focal length and telescope than price. So are you happy with the way your photo turned out? I am. Yeah? yeah. What'd you think of processing an image with that Allen Hans filter? I liked it. It was nice and punchy and gave me a little boost of encouragement that I needed while I was processing because I could start to see a lot of the nebulosity really early on in the edit. So that was nice. Okay, reveal time. Mm -hmm. 